All right, Martin here. Welcome back and let's start with the tutorial. What I have here opened is a handy little software I use for gathering reference images. It's called Pure Ref and I encourage you to go to the website of the developer and download it. The website is pureref.com and you can download it for five euros. Uh, I think you can even download it for free. This price is optional, but I really encourage you to give the money to the developers because this software is awesome, as you will soon see. People sometimes underestimate reference and I myself often used to do that mistake, but especially this project taught me uh, to start with it every time since it helped me a lot with historical accuracy and the overall design of the historical props. By the way, even though I've read a lot of books about ancient Greece and seen a lot of images and studies, still I'm not an expert and I'm sure I'll make some slight historical errors along the way. Uh, so if you notice something I'm doing wrong, definitely send me an email or add a comment. But now let's get to it. I usually start project like this going through some images I have on my hard drive. I look into books. Uh, one that I can truly recommend is this one called Greek Hoplite um, by the author Nicholas Secunda. And uh, it was illustrated by Adam Hook. And it's full of images, full of great reference and packed with information about hoplite gear hoplite weapons, stuff like that. So I can only recommend it. I also go to Google and just so that you can see how the pure ref software works, uh, I'll type in Aspis Shield, for example. Uh, I'm sorry, my browser is in Czech, but I'm sure you know what I'm doing. And for example, I like this image, so I just click on it, drag and drop into pure ref and here it is. I can add unlimited number of images. I can arrange them quickly and easily. Uh, it's really a great tool. The first image I have here is actually from the book. I just recommend it. Uh, and it's really awesome. It has all the parts of the hoplite gear. And I hope we will, on this channel, create all of these parts in these tutorials. But today we're focusing on this, the ancient Greek shield called Aspis. Uh, I actually have one more image here of the very same thing. Uh, as you can see, it's made of three layers. Uh, it wasn't actually whole bronze, it was just uh, covered with bronze. Uh, the bronze layer is very thin and it's, uh, it was put on the wooden base. The third layer is leather. Uh, often it was painted in bright colors and uh, it was glued on top of the backside of the wooden base. Also there are some bronze parts. Uh, these were used to holding the shield. And I think I have here an image. Yes, here it is. Uh, I have here an image where you can see how it was held by the hoplite. The hand goes through here and here is a grip. Uh, the grip was made in two ways. One was that there was actually a bronze hilt. And the second one was a rope. Uh, the rope was there for multiple reasons. One of them was, for example, the hoplite could put it on his shoulder and uh, carry the shield on his back. He could just grab it by the rope and hold it any way he wanted. And for example, I have another image here. It's from the game Total War. And here you can see that the grip is actually missing and the Spartan warrior is holding the shield just by the rope. But that's not what we're going to make. We're going to make this grip along with the rope. Each shield had a symbol or decoration. 
Oftentimes it was a symbol of his city or his tribe. Uh, in this image, for example, you can see uh, the Athenian owl, the symbol of the goddess Athena, and uh, many other symbols. For my shield, I chose these two snakes, but you can choose any symbol you want. There's plenty of reference on the web. Also, there's this pattern that I want to recreate. It was often used in architecture or uh, engravings and we will create it in 3D and decorate our shield with it. One thing we can do is arrange the images better. There is one option in images normalize. You can basically make all of them the same width or height. Uh, I will choose height. And now it's all mess, but there's one more option for it. You can go to images, arrange and optimal. So it's nicely ordered, arranged, evenly spaced. One more thing we can do is hit canvas, optimize. It will just trim the rim along your images. And that's it. You will often see me going back to this software to just have a look at the images and uh, gather inspiration for what to do next. I think it's a good habit to always have this kind of reference opened while you're working. All right, that's it for this reference part of the tutorial. And now let's go to Blender.